I'm not 100% sure, but if anybody lost a, a Ford F-150, looks like a silver or gray, this might be yours if you lost it. It's on talons how far it washed down. Man, I can't believe the work you got done at Fish Chop. That's amazing. It's better than that. Oh my goodness. Let me shake your hand again. <laughs> Good to see you. So listen, I needed to talk to you about a truck in the river up here that you probably didn't see. No, didn't it's see It's leaking it. gas bad into the river. You know where you stopped at? 2906 was there yesterday. They, I don't think it was you yesterday. I don't know, cleaning there. Was that you cleaning down the river? Yes. It, it was right in there and I should have, I didn't even think to tell you, but we filmed it. Can't see it hardly. You really got to get it's in there. under the debris. Yeah, I mean, that's her, the, the lady's property across, you know, so we're down in there filming and you look over in there in them trees and it's pushed down in there and you can see the petroleum coming out into the river. Let me go get it first. Yeah, if you don't care, I'd like to film it.
it at some point and just get it. I mean, you're here now, but. No, it is. Yeah, it's just. I don't know how I missed it. I didn't see it. We can run you up there in the vehicle. If you want, you know, we can run you in our vehicle up there so you can leave this here so you can see where it's at so we can show it to you. Yeah, you, you were right there cleaning by it and went right by it. And I, 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 I didn't, it. I didn't even think. Yeah. Didn't even think. Get to it from the river better or the I don't know. You, if you want to, we can run you up there real quick. And that way you don't have to move your vehicle. Yeah. Well, they have found it. It's been marked. Yeah. And uh, look right here. Oh, yeah. So it's 80% buried. There was yeah. no way you could really see it. But look what it's doing. Yeah, I see it. So it's going to be a big one. Yeah, that'll be a pain. You come up here and get it. All right, just wanted to make sure you found it because. Yeah, I'll have to cut a lot of this out and get it. Yeah. Well. All right, I just wanted to make sure you knew where it was at. Yes, sir. Because I think it's been there for a month now, so a few more hours ain't going to make that much of a difference. Yeah, we'll get it today for sure. Here in a little while. Okay. The homeowners here lived on the Swannanoa River. Um, they had a permanent home there, and then they came here for, you know, vacation cookouts. Long story short, the, the home on the Swannanoa River is gone. Uh, it got completely destroyed in this same storm and this is their only piece of land that they have so uh, as you can see we need a camper if, if anybody uh, knows of one for a good price or is willing to help donate towards uh, it's a couple of veterans here we'd like to get them a camper I'm gonna try to dismantle this mess and clear them a nice pad to put a new camper on. They still have power and they still have a septic here. So they just need a, they're homeless at the moment. So they need a home. So what happened here? Did this float on top of this camper or was this underneath? I think it was all over here and it, it all floated. Cause as you can see the campers, I mean, it's full of sand to the brim, but uh, it did hit the trees. So you're gonna try to get the camper up by the road to be picked up or? They still have some valuable. They won't go so through it first. Okay, I got pull you. the roof off of it, maybe, so they can get into it. All right. But any donations, as far as a, a camera. And how can how do, how would they get to you? If if you want to reach out to me, that would be great. Precision uh, grading. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. On Facebook. Yes, sir. Okay. And I think my phone number is on the shirt. Okay. Eight two eight four five eight zero zero one seven. All right. Yes, sir. If you, they would just contact me, I'd be. I'll make sure it gets here and they get help. All right. Thank you. you've done, you're doing amazing work here. Oh, well, thank Unbelievable you. Unbelievable what you've got done. Certainly trying.
All right, this is the same place that Jake was working on there on the previous clip. This is a few days later, and uh, the camper trailer that was under there, he tore apart apparently so they could get into it. It was full of sand and they wanted to try to recover some things. And Jake has been really good about getting people to show up and help. So they've had to go through quite a bit of this right here. You can see the back part of the, the trailer. They dug the sand out of it, probably seven foot of sand inside that trailer, almost to the top. They went through it, tore it apart. That's, that was there, I think, but over there's a lot of the roofing and here's stuff that the volunteers went through to try to save. Looked like some uh, personal items and a foot locker of some sort. There's the rafters that you saw moving by hand as Jake would take them out. And so, Right here is the electrical that can be fixed probably pretty easy. It's gonna have to probably have another pole put in. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's got underground. No, nope, it does, it has underground. So we're underground from the road somewhere. So this basically can be replaced pretty easy. Those breakers will have to be replaced. All that box will have to be replaced, but the main wire coming in from the road probably is fine because it's made to go underground. And then probably a phone box. Um, so I'm not for sure about the water or the sewer, um, but it's probably right in here somewhere, the uh, well and so forth. So this is the place that Jake was asking about earlier in the video to try to get an RV and it looks like still going to need some, if they're going to bring it down to here, still going to need some grade work. I'm going to think they're probably going to park it right along the top there most likely and work from there. So lots been done here, but there's a lot of cleanup still done, needing to be done. I'm just not even for sure. Maybe at some point we'll get to talk to the two. There's two brothers, they're veterans, and uh, their house on the Shenandoah River. In fact, we're talking about their permanent home destroyed, and they're gonna try to come back here. They need a camper trailer, but there's many, many people that does. So this is kind of, this video is kind of talking about trying to get people to donate trailers that they're not using RV trailers, fifth wheels, motor homes, whatever you got. Um, there's gonna be people needing that type of stuff. So guys, if you leave in the comment or contact Jack directly to help with this project here. All right, guys, I'm here with uh, another one of the uh, Green River Cove community residents and he was here during the flood and saw it and witnesses, and he's gonna tell you what he saw and what he went through during that time. So tell us your name. My name is Francis Mowry. Francis? Yes, sir. Tell us about the events and how they took place. Oh, it just, it rained 15 inches Wednesday and Thursday, then it rained 15 on the hurricane day, and all hell broke loose. And everything downstream from my house is gone. I mean, gone, these people need help big time. That's, I've been here for a month now, just helping out, doing what I can do, because I ain't got nothing else to do. I just retired a few months ago. And the um, main thing I want to is express is thanks for the Tar Heel attitude around here. Just everybody doing what they can. It, 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 I've never seen anything like it. Um, just good people. That's all there is to it. So now your wife, you said they evacuated out for you? Yeah, she... She took the first chopper out. They wouldn't take dogs, so I wasn't going. And uh, I had plenty of food, so I've been feeding people and doing things I can to do. So and what I, did you do for water? You did, did your water go out? Y'all knew, with no power, your well probably wouldn't have worked. No, but we, we were getting creek water to flush toilets. Okay. <laughs> and we had drinking water, and uh, we had food, we had gas stoves, we had, everybody got a generator up here. You'd be fooled without one. So you had, you kind of had stuff 
prepared in case this something like this happens, sounds like. Yeah, because right? we get power outages all the time. But I would like to express one uh, <coughs> thanks to Dick Power. They restored power in here. It took them 17 days, but that was a miracle to me. I mean, I usually cuss Dick Power, but they did a great job. They really did. Congrats, those boys. Yes, yeah, so all the poles are gone all the way up the river. Everything, every line was down. I mean, it was a mess. You can see them over in the river everywhere. laying over there and all the old everywhere. electrical line. It's just tangled up everywhere. Snapped up at the base. They come in and put all new poles in here. I never seen anything like it. Unbelievable, really. So was it on Saturday morning when it probably reached its peak height, or I mean, we're under what we'd have been underwater right here. Yeah. Way another yeah, from I'd, Maggie's house, we'd have another five foot deeper than what we are. I'd say day. between Friday morning and Saturday night, it it crested out, but it's back down. I'm just waiting for a trout to come back. <laughs> like to, sounds like you like to fish. I go, I call D and R and say, we, we, "How long to take a trout to swim way upstream?" <laughs> so I yeah. guess that's a, a through the night, and you saw all this just different things coming down the river. I imagine what were some of the things that stick out in your mind that you saw floating down the river, just kind of cars, RVs, houses, trees. I mean, I've never. I, I never can experience it again. I know that. So it sounded like it was, uh, the world was coming to an end. It sounded like what it looked like. Yeah, the world wasn't, but my mind was. Yeah. <laughs> so your wife, is she back here with you now? No, she's taking care of her sick aunt, but uh, she's doing great. And my son just got a new job with Georgia Power. So, yeah, this family, we do what we can for each other. That's all we do. Uh, have you? What have you thought about the volunteers that's coming down here that's been helping from all over? I, I am just blown away. I ain't going to say nothing against the government because that gets you in trouble, but the local volunteers have been what's happening around here. Yeah, I've all seen people coming. Uh, Fast Fred, he had people come from 600 miles away to bring him a, a yep. trailer and uh, different churches and uh, rescue groups. Yep. And, they're coming from all over and they're going to need to still come. I mean, a lot of people kind of think it's over, but there's a lot mm. of people still, ne still needing help. Yeah. And Woody Callaway, right up, he's the house right by me. He, he's like kind of the major concrete down here. He's awesome. So it, we just, we, we have like meetings every once in a while. We discuss what we're going to do and it seems to work. Well, I appreciate your interview and, uh, Keep up that good attitude. They need it down here. So. I appreciate you, Bo. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. All right. Here is the truck that was in the uh, sand buried over by the river leaking um, fuel into the river. Just like Jake said he would, he got it out. And uh, it was a Ford F-150 but the whole bed's still missing, probably. No, nope. over oh, here it is. So yeah, that was quite the project. He's had to cut trees here. There's culvert in there. Actually, some of that was laying over there that he got out the other day. So here's a remnants of the bed of it right here. I don't know how insurance is going to deal with these. I guess um, I don't know if they're trying to, if they're going to try to recover these or need to recover them for the insurance. Or I'm not 100% sure. But if anybody lost a, a Ford F-150, looks like a silver or gray. This might be yours if you lost it. It's untelling how far it washed down. Could have been not too far away. It might have come a mile or two. Hard to say. But, uh, yeah. So this is a debris field. A lot of this was in the road. So people first coming in, a lot of these logs were stretched all the way across the road. And so they've kind of been pushed into some piles or there's probably some uh all this debris looked like that washed in right here got caught 
which we can see right here that he had to cut some trees to get that one out. So Jake, a good job. Another vehicle that was leaking petroleum gas into the river has been fished out. Well, we're back here in front of Maggie's house that you hopefully saw the video of uh, that we posted a few days ago. This is all the contents of the inside of her house. This is her kitchen cabinets, her kitchen uh, countertops, her refrigerator, her stove, her washer and dryer, microwave, furniture, beds, couches, you name it, it's all in here, it's all gone. It was destroyed with the water. And uh, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Maggie. You've been helping her. This is Amy Perez and she is a good friend of Maggie's and she's become a good friend of mine now because she's been helping Maggie up until uh, every day until Diane came in to help. And then this week she's been my transportation and helping me get to down here to the cove and different places that we've been filming. And uh, so tell us about your program that you got going on for Maggie. So I set up a GoFundMe, hashtag Save Maggie's House, and I set up a Facebook page because I didn't have one before. So I could just post all the updates and keep on top of that. Uh, it seems like it's a whole lot easier to share than going through the updates on GoFundMe. So I've been posting um, any requests, needs, things we're looking for, reaching out for volunteers, and it's been really great for getting what we need to help Maggie with the next steps because there's a lot of steps and we're just one at a time and we can put it out there and we appreciate everybody who's supporting her and has come around her and is donating to help this family because they they really need it and it's so appreciated there aren't really words how much it's appreciated and that's where we are now we just continue to update on the Facebook page so you can find that on Facebook. You can find the information through the GoFundMe and we really appreciate any help we can get. And I'd like to say that when you donate directly to someone like this, that 100% of that funds is going to them. And I don't have anything bad to say about any of the large organizations because they do a great work, but some of the larger organizations, only a small percentage of that due to so much staff and administration costs and overhead doesn't get to the actual people that need it so this lets you pick and choose who you want to help and you know it's going directly there to those people and yeah. uh, so this video today is uh, to give appreciation to jake for what he's doing yes with jake precision grading <laughs> yes he's thank you thank you thank you we had caught him driving by the other day and asked him when he had time if he could get this was all spread out on the front yard and he got in here with his equipment and got it within the 10 feet of the road so that when they do start coming through to haul this out it will get hauled out instead of still be sitting on the front lawn which is important because i know maggie mentioned the other day that every time she comes here just to see that there it just creates so much stress for her to see all of her worldly belongings laying there so we're hoping that um that can get hauled off soon but at least now it's here by the road and just huge shout out to Jake. Thank you so much for all that you're doing for everybody here on the Green River. And the things that I, and I first met Jake when I was here on Sunday and uh, uh, he was working at Fish Top and you saw that footage in the opening. It does not look nothing like it used to, but it looks so much better now. You can at least access the river. Uh, you can park up there. It's not really open to the public this, I guess at this point, but come spring, it, I'm sure it'll be open and uh, Jake's been going multiple places not just here he's working all over and he has guys that work for him and uh, his uh, Facebook page link will be at the bottom uh, in the description and his phone number and he's uh, he worked I think 16 seven day, 17 days something like that straight for free no charge to anybody but at this point he's trying to take some donations to help Every dollar he takes in, he's going to match it for a, a dollar, basically working for half price on helping people but to not charge them, just like what he did for Maggie here. There was no charge for that. And the other and people. And actually, I'm pretty sure that if somebody's in need, he will still work for no charge. But he's been doing just a lot of general cleanup around here. And so that's helping cover just some of the general work he's doing. But I know he has still put out there that he'll still work free of charge. Like if there's somebody that's still 
they're like blocked in, they don't have access to their home, things like that, he will come and he'll still help. Yeah, and that, those donations help him buy gas and pay for his insurance. I'm sure he's got payments on his equipment and a house payment. And he has to eat and he's got kids. So, you know, he can't just keep working for absolutely free, but he's going to do it for half what he normally would charge his nor uh, normal hourly rate. And I'm going to tell you, he gets a lot done in an hour. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's amazing. You know, he, we told him, uh, we showed him the, uh, the truck earlier in this video. That was a couple of days ago. Uh, he came and he... Uh, was able to um, uh, get the truck out and so we're going to go down and get a little bit more footage and uh, we'll talk to you in just a minute.